Chapter 6, The Principle of Cause and Effect This principle embodies the fact that there is a cause for every effect, an effect from every cause. It explains that everything happens according to law, that nothing ever merely happens, that there is no such thing as chance, that while there are various planes of cause and effect, the higher dominating the lower planes, still nothing ever entirely escapes the law. The hermetists understand the art and methods of rising above the ordinary plane of cause and effect to a certain degree, and by mentally rising to a higher plane, they become causers instead of effects. The masses of people are carried along obedient to environment, the wills and desires of others stronger than themselves, heredity, suggestion, and other outward causes moving them about like pawns on the chessboard of life. But the masters, rising to the plane above, dominate their moods, characters, qualities, and powers, as well as the environment surrounding them, and become movers instead of pawns. They help to play the game of life, instead of being played and moved about by other wills and environment. They use the principle instead of being its tools. The masters obey the causation of the higher planes, but they help to rule on their own plane. In this statement there is condensed a wealth of hermetic knowledge. Let him who read, let him read who can. Chapter 7, The Principle of Gender Gender is in everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine principles. Gender manifest on all planes. The Cabellion. Cabellion. The principle, this principle provides, no, this principle embodies the truth that there is gender manifested in everything. The masculine and feminine principles ever at work. This is true not only of the physical plane, but of the mental and even the spiritual planes. On the physical plane, the principle manifests as sex. On the higher planes, it takes higher forms. But the principle is ever the same. No creation, physical, mental, or spiritual, is possible without this principle. An understanding of its laws will throw light on many a subject that has perplexed the minds of men. The principle of gender works ever in the direction of generation, regeneration, and creation. Everything and every person contains the two elements of principle, or this great principle within it, him or her. Every male thing has the female element also. Every female contains also the male principle. If you would understand the philosophy of mental and spiritual creation, generation, and regeneration, you must understand and study this hermetic principle. It contains the solution of many mysteries of life. We caution you that this principle has no, principle has no reference to the many base, pernicious, and degrading lustful theories and teachings and practices which are taught under fanciful titles and which are a prostitution of the great natural principle of gender. Such base revivals of the ancient and famous forms of phalixism tend to ruin mind, body, and soul, and the hermetic philosophy has ever sounded the warning note against these degraded teachings which tend toward lust, lasciviousness, and perversion of nature's principle. If you seek such teaching, you must go elsewhere for them. For them, Hermeticism contains nothing for you along these lines. To the pure, all things are pure. To the base, all things are base. Next chapter, Mental Transmutation. Mind, as well as metals and elements, may be transmuted from state to state degree to degree, condition to condition, pole to pole, vibration to vibration. True hermetic transmutation is a mental art. And that is from the Kabbalion. As we have stated, the hermetist 
were the original alchemist, astrologers, and psychologist, Hermes having been the founder of these schools of thought. From astrology has grown modern astronomy. From alchemy has grown modern chemistry. From the mystic psychology has grown the modern psychology of the schools. But it must not be supposed that the ancients were ignorant of that which the modern schools supposed to be their exclusive and special property. The records engraved on the stones of ancient Egypt show conclusively that the ancients had a full comprehensive knowledge of astronomy, the very building of the pyramids showing the connection between their design and the study of astronomical science. Nor were they ignorant of chemistry, for the fragments of the ancient writings show that they were acquainted with the chemical properties of things. In fact, the ancient theories regarding physics are being slowly verified by the latest discoveries of modern science, notably those relating to the constitution of matter. Nor must it be supposed that they were ignorant of the so-called modern discoveries of psychology. On the contrary, the Egyptians were especially skilled in the science of psychology, particularly in the branches that the modern schools ignore but which, nevertheless, are being uncovered under the name of psychic science, which is perplexing the psychologists of today and making them reluctantly admit that there may be something in it after all. The truth is that beneath the material chemistry, astronomy, and psychology, that is, the psychology in its phase of brain action, the ancients possessed a knowledge of transcendental astronomy, called astrology, of transcendental chemistry, called alchemy, of transcendental psychology, called mystic psychology. They possessed the inner knowledge as well as the outer knowledge, the latter alone being possessed by modern scientists. Among the many secret branches of knowledge possessed by the Hermetist was that known as mental transmutation which forms the subject matter of this lesson. Transmutation is a term usually employed to designate the ancient art of the transmutation of metals, particularly of the base metals into gold. The word transmute means to change from one nature, form, or substance into another, to, to transform. And accordingly, mental transmutation means the art of changing and transforming mental states, forms, and conditions into others. So you may see that mental transmutation is the art of mental chemistry, if you like the term, a form of practical mystic psychology. But this means far more than appears on the surface, transmutation alchemy or chemistry on the mental plane is important enough in its, in its effects to be sure, and if the art stopped there it would still be one of the most important branches of study known to man. But this is only the beginning. Let us see why. The first of the seven hermetic principles is the principle of mentalism, the axiom of which is, the all is mind, the universe is mental which means that the underlying reality of the universe is mind and the universe itself is mental that is existing in the mind of the all we shall consider this principle in succeeding lessons but let us see the effect of the principle if it be assumed to be true if the universe is mental in its nature then mental transmutation must be the art of changing the conditions of the universe along the lines of matter, force, and mind. So you see, therefore, that mental transmutation is really the magic of which the ancient writers had so much to say in their mystical works, and about which they gave so few practical instructions. If all be mental, then the art which enables one to transmute mental conditions must render the master the controller of material conditions, as well as those ordinary ordinarily called mental.